Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We are interested in this sum, n from 1 to infinity, cotangent of pi square root 2n over n cubed. Wolfram alpha says that this summation diverges. So we have two tasks to show that this summation actually converges. And then the second part is to obtain its exact value. To show convergence, we will use something like uh, the comparison test. So we take the magnitude of the summand here. And we will try to show that it is upper bounded by something that we know is convergent. Specifically, our goal will be to show that this is less than or equal to some positive constant divided by n squared. And we know that summation n from 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared is pi squared over 6, which is a finite number. And then after demonstrating that the series converges, we will shift our focus and try to get the exact value of the sum. So let's start by upper bounding the magnitude of the summon, right cot as cosine over sine, then the magnitude of the cosine in the numerator is less than or equal to one. Now we have a magnitude of a sine in the denominator. So for further upper bounding, we need a lower bound on the sum. Here we exploit the fact that the sine function is concave from 0 to pi over 2. We can check this using the second derivative, sine theta. If we differentiate once, we get cosine theta. If we differentiate another time, we get minus sine theta. And if theta is living between 0 and pi over 2, this is non-positive. So sine function is concave. If g is a concave function and lambda is between 0 and 1, then g of lambda a plus 1 minus lambda b is greater than or equal to lambda g of a plus 1 minus lambda g of b. So in our case, g, the function, the concave function g is the sine function. a will be pi over 2 and b is 0. So we will study sine applied to this convex combination of 0 and pi over 2, specifically lambda pi over 2 plus 1 minus lambda 0. By the definition of concavity, this is superior to lambda sine pi over 2, and this is equal to 1, plus 1 minus lambda sine 0, and that's 0. And so the right-hand side here is lambda. Our inequality is that sine lambda over 2 pi is greater than or equal to lambda. And this is for lambda that is between 0 and 1. Next step is that we will define x as lambda over 2. So if lambda is in the range between 0 and 1, then x is in the range between 0 and 1 half. Now rewriting our inequality using x, we have sine pi x is greater than or equal to lambda is 2x. And so this is an inequality for x between 0 and 1 half. And the sine function is odd, x is odd. And what we can do is that we can apply the absolute value and have this inequality satisfied for x in the range from minus 1 over 2 to 1 over 2. Uh, before proceeding with our upper bounding, we will do a tiny modification here. We will take the magnitude of sine pi square root 2 times n. We will add here square root 2 n minus m, where m is an integer. Now, in magnitude, this magnitude is equal to that one. There is no problem. Uh, but for m, we will, we will not make it like a general integer. We will specifically choose m to be the integer that is closest to 
the real number square root two times n. Okay, so here are the integers living happily on the number line and square root two n, this is an irrational number. Let's say that it is here and m, we will choose m to be the integer that is closest to square root two n. And by doing this, square root two n minus m will be in the range from minus one half to one half. And so we can apply our inequality. So our inequality will be signed by, and then now we have a number between minus half and half. And so this is greater than or equal to double this number. So two magnitude square root two n minus n. So again, in our upper bounding, we reach this step then we will insert this m where m is an integer and it's not an arbitrary integer m is the closest integer two square root two times n then this is a quantity between minus half and half we can employ our derived inequality based on the concavity of the sine function now we have a lower bound because we take the reciprocal of both sides and we have this upper bounding step. This quantity is upper bounded by one over two n cubed. And then in the denominator, we have the magnitude of square root two n minus n. Take n as a common factor. So we have one over two n to the fourth, and then we have square root two minus m over n. Now we can employ Louisville's inequality. And the idea is that this inequality provides a lower bound on the magnitude of the difference between an irrational algebraic number x and this rational number p over q. So p and q are integers and q is not equal to zero. So x here is our square root two. Now we have an irrational, not just an irrational number, it is algebraic. So it appears as a root when we take uh, a polynomial with integer coefficients and equate it to zero. So the minimal polynomial, the polynomial with the minimal degree that gives square root two as a root is square root, is uh, x squared minus square root two. If we take this polynomial, equate it to zero, then we get the two irrational algebraic numbers, square root two and minus square root two. So D in our case will be the degree of this polynomial, which is two. So we have by this theorem, square root two, it's an algebraic irrational number, minus M over N, these are two, the two integers we are interested in. This is greater than or equal to some positive constant C divided by N raised to the power D, which is a square. So take the reciprocal of both sides, so now we have this step of our bounding. This is less than or equal to n squared over n squared over c. Like this. So this term is less than or equal to n squared over c. So the upper bound now becomes 1 over 2c, 1 over n squared. So 1 over 2c is a positive constant. And because if we sum one over n squared n from one to infinity, we get a finite result. Then this series cotangent square root two pi n over n cubed, if we sum n from one to infinity, we should also get a finite result. So no, it it is not divergent. In fact, it converges. The next question is, so what is the exact value of this summation here? Let's see our tools. You know, these are uh, three statements that we will take for granted. Zeta of two, uh, which is the sum of one over V squared V from one to infinity, that's pi squared over six. Zeta of four, which is the sum here raised to the power four. And this is pi to the four over 90. 
and then we have this magnificent expansion for the cotangent function which is valid for any complex valued z except the integers define a psi of alpha as summation n from one to infinity cotangent alpha pi n over n cube if you compare this with the desired summation alpha is square root 2 so the idea is we are hunting for the value of this function when this parameter alpha is equal to square root 2. The cotangent function is periodic and it has a period of pi. So cotangent alpha pi n is equal to cotangent alpha pi n. And then we can add here any integer multiple of the period, which is pi. So if we put pi n, that's OK. We have an equality. And taken by n as a common factor, this is cotangent by n alpha plus 1. So using this, we see that epsi alpha plus 1 is equal to epsi of alpha. So epsi of square root 2 minus 1. So if you add 1, you get the same result. If you add another 1, you get the same result. So these three guys are the same. So our strategy will be to have an expression relating epsi of square root 2 plus 1 and epsi of square root 2 minus 1. But actually, both of them are equal to epsi of square root 2. So in other words, we will have an equation with one unknown, which is epsi of square root 2. Solving, we will get the value of this guy, and this is the quantity we are after. Start with Psi of square root 2 plus 1. Here it is. So we will replace this alpha in the definition of Psi of alpha by square root 2 plus 1. Then use the expansion of the cotangent function. So we'll use this one. We have cotangent of pi z is 1 over pi z plus 2z over pi, and then we have this summation. So we will apply this here because we have we have cotangent of pi times something. So z in, in this expression here will be n times square root 2 plus 1. So we have 1 over 1 over pi z plus 2z over pi, then the summation. I will take the pi as a common factor. So here is the pi in the expansion. n cubed, this n cubed is this n cubed. Then here we have 1 over z. So this 1 over z will be square root 2 plus 1 times n. And then here we have 2z. Here it is. And then we have the summation k from 1 to infinity, and then we have z squared. z here is n square root 2 plus 1 minus k squared. Okay, so this is an application of the expression. And uh, now you see uh, we have uh, z uh, is definitely uh, not an integer. Right. So here we are prohibited uh, from using this expression if z is an integer. But in our case, we have z is uh, square root 2 plus 1 times n. So this is an irrational number times this integer n. So this is never an integer. So take this with that. We have zeta of 4. So we are done with this part. Then we have this summation. So we have summation k from 1 to infinity, summation n from 1 to infinity, and then we have n cubed from here, and here we have n, so it is 1 over n squared, and then we have this guy. We do partial fractions, so we can write down this 1 over n squared times this bracket. We can write it as minus 1 over k squared n squared plus square root 2 plus 1 all squared, and then here in the denominator, we will have k squared times this bracket. 
and we can check that actually this is true. If we take these two guys and just have a common denominator, we will find that the uh, numerator will be k squared. So k squared will go with this k squared, and we will go back to this uh, summand here. After splitting this into two terms, then now we have here summation k from 1 to infinity, 1 over k squared, and we have summation n from 1 to infinity, 1 over n squared. Each one of those guys is zeta of 2. So each one is pi squared over 6. And together uh, with the minus sign, we have minus pi to the power 4 divided by 36. There is a pi here downstairs. And so we end up in the numerator with pi cubed. So here is, again, another number uh, when we apply the double sum to this term here. Then we have this one. OK. Now, the idea is that this term here can be written back as cotangent. So our expansion for the cotangent function can be written in this way. Take this summation and multiply the numerator and denominator by square root 2 minus 1. Note that, that square 2 minus 1 times the square root 2 plus 1 is equal to 2 minus 1, which is 1. So if we multiply here by this guy, we get 1 in the numerator. If we multiply by the same factor in the denominator times this factor, we will get 1. And so we have n squared, and we multiply this by k squared, so we will get square root 2 minus 1 squared times k squared. We can swap the terms in the denominator and have a minus sign here. Now, if you look at this summation, we can compare it with this summation. So z here is like z is equal to square root 2 minus 1k. And so our cotangent, its argument will be pi times k times square root 2 minus 1, like this. And when we convert this summation into a cotangent, there, there is also, it is not just that we have the cotangent, we uh, time is 1 over 2z here, we will also get minus 1 over 2z, minus 1 over 2z. So in our case, we will have minus 1 over 2, and then this constant squared, and then k squared, and then there is a k squared here. And so we will get k to the 4. So the extra term coming from here will give us, again, zeta of 4, which is pi to the 4 divided by 90. And now the summation with the cotangent, because z is a square root 2 minus 1, then this is our function epsi with the parameter alpha equal to square root 2 minus 1. This was the objective. To write down an expression in which we have epsi over square root 2 plus 1 and epsi square root 2 minus 1, both are equal to epsi of square root 2. So again, don't forget that epsi of alpha is epsi of alpha plus 1. And now we have an equation. This, we can combine these three terms as pi cubed over 90 times square root 2 plus 1. Now write down this as epsi of square root 2, this as epsi of square root 2, rearrange the terms, and here is the value of the sum.